All right, so next up, uh, we're going to have a knowledge panel. Uh, Tom Kramer, he's the Associate University Library Director at Stanford. Him and Simeon Warner from Cornell, they'll present a knowledgeable panel on knowledge panels. <laughs> yes. Let's see. That was the whole point of proposing this was the title. <laughs>
Thank you, Tom. Um, so yeah, as Tom mentioned, um, we did uh, some experimentation recently in our um, blacklight-based discovery environment at Stanford called SearchWorks. Um, I'm actually going to use, uh, against my better judgment, try to do a live demo here. Um, so we actually do have a publicly accessible demo. Um, this is not our production instance, but is a, a very close approximation to it, uh, pointing to um, a very close approximation to our production index where we've um, gone and done some uh, additional URI uh, augmenting of our mark records and subfield zeros and ones with URIs. Um, so in this case, we've done a couple of flavors of knowledge panel. Um, the first one I'd like to show you is one that's kind of a work knowledge panel or we kind of call it title level. Um, so this is a, a URIs that are attached to the 130 um, field in our mark records. Um, as I mentioned, we were using um, subfield zeros and ones, and we have um, uh, either uh, OCLC identifiers, VIFs, or ISNIs, um, or all three. Uh, so we'll, we'll have that, um, and then we're going and hitting um, a Wikidata Sparkle endpoint to pull in this information. Um, so re really briefly, you, know, you can see we're pulling in some image. Uh, we're pulling in a cast list, which we found was actually um, in some cases more robust than the ones that we had in our own records, um, as well as uh, derivative works. And I'm sorry, you're going to notice really quickly that I don't know how to use a computer. Um, <laughs> I'll also call out that um, we wanted a call to action at the bottom here to indicate um, A, the source of the data, and B, um, that this is data that you can edit. Um, so to kind of show the, the power to the users that the, you know, this is something that if you click this link and you can log in, you can actually um, enhance this data. Uh, similarly um, to a title or a work knowledge panel, we also did an author uh, knowledge panel. Um, in this particular case, we kind of can have them in two places. Uh, you'll probably notice on that last page, although I wasn't, uh, I didn't scroll down too much because I kind of don't know how to compute. Um, but um, you'll see that on various of the author entities in here, we do have um, a little. Um, uh, I information button which you can open up to get uh, more information about, about um, all of these people. Um, we'll also pull this in in search results. So when you're clicking from record views uh, to a list of authors or searching for uh, or it, like faceting on authors, it's kind of various different ways that you can get into this point. But we can then pull in um, the same author data right in search results to, um, to uh, en enhance that a little bit. And one of the things you can see, we're also, we are pulling in like notable works and um, occupation lists. Um, uh, kind of on that same thread, I also did want to just point out one cool thing that we did find was the ability through their notable works to pull in audio files and pull in an HTML5 audio player <coughs> right into our search results and record views that would allow people to listen to this music in our application. Um, we found that, they, well, I'm sure somebody here knows more about how this data is sourced, but um, all of these things are on Wikicommons and, and public and um, seem to be open. Um, and finally, um, I did want to show, and uh, Huda got uh, into this a little bit, uh, we did want to show some of the, uh, one of the goals that we wanted to uh, work with geographic data, but also merge two different data sources into the same panel. So um, kind of really simply here, we're, uh, getting um, this map information from who's on first uh, based on um, the, uh, the, the name. We've done some lookups and some reconciliation. And then a lot of the who's on first data has Library of Congress identifiers associated with the, the data. So we were able to uh, pull in a map, go and get the hierarchy here um, of where this place is located in, but then also using the Library of Congress identifier, go to uh, Wikidata and pull in other information. Uh, in this case right here, just the description, but we can obviously uh, iterate on this in the future. And um, using the who's on first data, we were actually able to kind of create a, a little interactive map um, that's just uh, just modifying the map here, but you can kind of go jump up and down the hierarchy of wherever the, the place is. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the, the different knowledge panels that we've been experimenting with and we'll be um, getting gathering user data on how kind of useful these are and what people think of them. Thank you, Jesse. And uh, Huda, who spoke earlier, is going to do a demonstration of some of the work that Cornell has done in the knowledge panel screen.
reminder to some people that Cornell has knowledge panels for authorities. Um, this is uh, what Cornell has right now in production. This isn't experimenting with linked data, but this was one of the examples we looked at when we were trying to see what we can do with knowledge panels. This shows uh, the annotated Pride and Prejudice, and we have these little info buttons next to the authors. And if you click on it, you can see information coming in from the authority of the way. Cornell has implemented this right now is we have a separate index with authority information, which then allows us to do things like link back to the rest of the catalog and say there are 202 titles by Jane Austen and 606 titles about Jane Austen and pull in the contextual information about the author um, from that so people can see it. So um, as an experiment, we thought, well, if we were to try to pull from wiki data, what might that look like? And hopefully this will still work. In the um, this is taking a vanilla Blacklight 7 um, instance and trying to use the same info panel code that we have in our um, production, uh, but it is instead pulling directly from Wikidata and saying, well, let's get me a picture, get me people who are influenced by Jane Austen and some notable works. And also on the right hand side, um, it's using Blacklight's regular. Um, column that has for tools and other things to try to get related works, so additions and translations and um, derivative um, works. So this is pulling, um, so we don't actually have URIs in our production catalog, this is hitting our production catalog. Um, what we're doing here is doing a, a Library of Congress uh, name search based on the, the authority title or the authority heading we have, and then going out and getting the Wikidata URI and then getting the Wikidata information from the queries. Um, I haven't found a reasonably uh, succinct way of getting the work information yet, but these queries are all real on the right side. They're just have been using a hard-coded URI. Um, we're trying to figure out how to get the URIs in so we can actually make this work. So that's all. Great. Thank you for that. And Dan Scott. From Laurentian, as uh, Laurentians have a, a knowledge panel in over a couple of years now, actually in production. And Dan is free to show. Sure. So, not doing a live demo because it's so simple. Um, so, in 2017, um, I was getting excited about Wikidata and talking with catalogers and uh, uh, working with Stacey Allison Kasson on the uh, Music in Canada 150 uh, campaign for Wiki, Wikipedia and Wikidata. And talking with catalogers and other people in the library, they said, well, okay, so there's this open database with, uh, I think back time, 40 million items in it that anyone can, can edit. Why do we care? So this was my, okay, well, here's a reason that we might care. Um, and so the idea is that in our catalog, uh, we actually gave up on authorities when we migrated to our current uh, ILS Evergreen um, for reasons. Um, <laughs> so this is an example of not relying on uh, authorities or URIs within the MARC records, but actually just doing the name lookup on uh, Sparkle Query, all in JavaScript. And uh, it works pretty well on a small sample. I had about 80% uh, match once we corrected our data in our MARC records. Authorities can do good things, um, and you know it does have a edit on wiki wiki data uh, sort of semi acknowledgement as well as the Wikipedia icon down at the bottom to give you what summary comes from. Code is freely licensed and it's available. One of the reasons it was easy for me to do was because the DOM of our HTML was already split up because we've been expressing schema.org from our MARC records since 2012, 2013, something like that. So it had to be, we were expressing an RDFA, so it had to be there and easy to pull out the name and extract the elements. So it made life easier. Um, happy to talk about this more in our questions. Uh, okay, so I am the transition from the knowledgeable panel to the knowledgeable audience. Um, I get to pose a few questions that I, I think about and worry about as a way to segue into the discussion portion of this. So, uh, you know, one, one question you might ask is, well, well, why panel? You know, we've heard some examples here. A panel is a way to draw out some information which isn't quite the same as the things that are in the catalog, perhaps as we've seen on the 
examples, give us a hint of what the source is, um, and provide a way to, to separate that and identify it. Perhaps it's less trustworthy, perhaps it's not. Um, but then, you know, what's the, the purpose of our, our knowledge panel? Why are we doing this? I think, you know, one of the first answers there is, okay, so I get to something, how do I know I found the Adam Smith I was looking for? How do I know that I found the town of Cambridge that has a 13th century university in it? Um, that's very useful to understand the context of the information being shown to the catalog. A second purpose might be, how do I present additional related information, links that are going to be useful to someone who's found this resource in my catalog? And I know that these might be internal. We might be linking to external data that allows us to route back into our internal data in a richer and more interesting way. We might be using Wikidata to draw connections that aren't explicit in our catalog. Or we might simply be linking to external data. A third possible purpose is to provide answers. Maybe I will find in this panel the birth date of the Adam Smith I was looking for, or the population of the town of Cambridge that I was looking for. I'd argue that numbers, or letters A and B, are likely much, much more important of a purpose in our environment than C, and probably B, the presentation of related, links to related information, both internally and externally, is, is key. But then as we move forward with this, one, it's a bunch of work to try and put up knowledge panels. And secondly, how are we going to know they're helping? Um, we are distracting our users from what they were seeing before. Is that distraction worth it? We are taking up valuable real estate. Are we using that wisely? How are we going to measure this? So those are the questions I was particularly concerned about. We have a bunch of other questions to see the discussion. And we invite everyone in the room to continue to comment on these as we assemble the panel. So what data do we want and do we need from within our catalogs from external sources? We've had a couple of demonstrations, three demonstrations of practical attempts to do these things. It's not the only efforts out in this uh, space. So what do we know that works? What tooling works? What have we learned about the user experience? And rather selfishly for the LD, for P projects who are sort of trying to do things here, but also as an effort to seed a, a community effort that lives separate from the project work, what should we do next? And we want to put a little plug for the LD4 affinity group. So without wanting to waste more time of us talking at the room, if I could assemble the panel now, and we will be happy to start a discussion. I would encourage the panelists to try to be brief if they take on a discussion points so that we don't end up with a simple question long response. So, open to questions and answers from the audience. <laughs> Probably need a mic up here too. Shari, if I'm using Davis. Um, I think you have two questions. They're sort of related to catalogs, but the cataloging practice, but not necessary. So first one is when you thinking about linking outside, external. Um, before you do that, do you do any evaluation of data quality or stuff? So that's the first one. Second is, do you think in the cataloging method, the more linking we put in, the better? And if that's the case, how do we what is the criteria we should use to think this link will be helpful down the way for discovery? Thank you. So for your second question, I think uh, quality assessment and uh, methodologies for quality assessment of uh, what collections we're going to link to. Um, the library world has a long history of quality assessment for records, and that's sort of at a library to library level. Um, I think we need to do much more work uh, towards quality assessment at a more granular level with linked data um, for exactly those needs, because the needs of our library are going to be different from the needs of your library. Um, so I think that's a 
partial answer to your second question. There's work to be done there. Um, I think the first question, or at least one of the parts of the question was, does it, are we going for like a number of links? And um, I don't see it that way. I think from a user experience point of view, it would be useful to understand what kind of questions users actually want to answer, and then based on that, uh, see what data sources will provide that information. Um, there may be multiple data sources that we need to use, but I think it's more about the content we can get the coverage question and the quality question are very important. I don't know how to answer that, but um, they all are um, Yeah, so for, uh, from my perspective, uh, before we did the uh, work cycle to get our knowledge panels in, um, one of the kind of pre-tasks pre to doing that was actually having some of our other uh, people that work on our ILS do a big push towards getting a lot more URIs um, in. We are having kind of very sparse coverage and one of the things that we were um, uh, really adamant about was that we kind of required URIs in our data to do this. I'm very hard to find that you know people are finding success in the name lookups, but I don't trust the data enough in our 10 million plus records or whatever it is um, to, to you know. Add, I'm not sure 80 percent is what we would have hit, especially knowing um, what we've what we've had so far. Um, so I and particularly for the experimental phase of it. Um, that's why I think for a number of URIs, like we want as many as possible because we want to be able to use that to start aggregating um, as much data and information we can about the coverage and success. Um, so I think we were really interested in, particularly why I mentioned we even have, um, for many of our uh, um, authors, we really have all three um, authority IDs and that, that's good for us because we have found that we get better um, coverage in the data, actually using all three URIs to query them. Can I jump in on this? Yes, if anyone in the audience wants to speak to this question, we can do that after as well. So I'm, I'm really struck about uh, how many libraries are going to go home and go through an exercise to figure out what the extent and quality of data in Wikidata or other sources is. And I wonder if we could accelerate that process, not by waiting for a conference in two years when whoever gets there first does the best presentation, but if we might somehow coordinate our coverage. if. Uh, Wisconsin is ahead of many of us. If we can uh, come up with some way to crowdsource the coverage or work with the Wikidata community, with the Wikimedia in residence, um, it seems like there's, there's something that we could collectively do that would get a better assessment for what's out there, what's not out there, and maybe also identify areas where we could add more data. So I think this is in the what data do we want or need category. I was remarking this to Steve that I was struck by um, academic collections using so many popular title and popular authors examples, knowing that the vast majority of our collections, the data is going to be very thin, or the authors uh, or even the subjects are not going to be represented in Wikidata. So what kind of data do we need to make knowledge cards or knowledge panels useful, impactful um, for the long, long tail of authors that are in our academic audience. So I'll take that, and um, I believe it's Dorothy, uh, uh, who had talked about communities not uh, existing to provide sort of the context and uh, I guess the, the description that, that we want. So in my case, um, uh, our panels are limited to just music, uh, music recordings, um, and so much of the music that wasn't, up, wasn't showing up was Quebecois uh, folk music, um, which there's not a large community. Actually, there's a pretty good Wikidata community in uh, Montreal, but uh, not a large community putting data on Wikidata about those people. But that we see as an opportunity, if we had the resources, to be able to reflect that in a broader space than our knowledge, the knowledge that we have. So when we find there are gaps, there are things that we believe we could contribute to if we have the resources. Um, the word synergy came to my mind and then I asked myself if that means I'm a manager. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I have identity crisis. Um, so I, I mean, as Jesse said and as Dan is saying as well, I mean, um, we are trying to just basically, it's like an experimental and analysis phase right now. 
Um, we are trying to figure out exactly what it is we can even get. And as you noted, there are the reason that I pulled up Pride and Prejudice and not something else is because I know that I can have data to demonstrate. There are lots of you know gaps. Um, doesn't mean that there isn't lots of interesting information there. So as we're just sort of plugging along, trying to figure out what it is we can even use, and as Tom was mentioning, I mean, it would be good to then take that information, that analysis, and then go back to those data sources and say, uh, we need more here, and we really do want to use your stuff. Um, so I guess that was the same. Um, and I, I guess I'll probably say pretty much the same thing, but in a slightly different way. Um, so uh, I think that was really one of the motivating factors for the call, the call to action to edit that source. Um, we, we do find, like um, in the cases of um, Stanford researchers, which you know, admittedly are probably more prominently represented in, in sources like Wikidata, um, but still very, very sparse. And now if they see their like, name in their panel in the catalog at Stanford and the data is not sparse, or the data is not there, they might be more motivated to actually do something about that. Um, and secondly, I think that, um, uh, in just building on, on what, what, um, what has already been said by Huda and Dan, but I think libraries and archives and museums are uniquely positioned to actually put more data out there and actually make the data in linked open data sources much richer. And um, this is sort of the way to start raising uh, the profile of that amongst our users. This is a question I was thinking about looking at the examples and wondering what work or collaboration has been done with um, instructors at the universities. Thinking about how often with early research or undergraduate classes, instructors have been trying to make really clear differentiations between the library catalog as a place of authority and things with that W logo as places you can start, but that's not where you get your information from. Don't cite that on this paper. So I'm wondering, you know, I can obviously, I can see that value, and I think that people in a certain level of research also obviously can make that differentiation, but I'm wondering how people that are teaching those classes, if there's been discussions with them, or if that's a, that a different type of pedagogy that would need to be developed, because it feels like some of them, that would they would start getting papers and they like, I told you not to do this, but I actually am not going to tell you, don't use the library catalog. Um, that's a great question. Uh, there are two things that came to mind. I'll probably forget the second one from the first. But the first thing that came to mind was, as I was talking to my niece over break, um, uh, over my vacation trying to work out discovery, um, one of the things she said is, you know, when she does a search in a search engine, and, uh, and she's like, yeah, the little knowledge panel comes up with Wikipedia, but it also has other sources in it because I can't use Wikipedia. So I really like the fact that it says there are other sources there. Um, so I think that might be one thing where, you know, yes, it has Wikipedia or Wikidata, but it then also gives you a list of sources from, you know, those connection points. As far as talking to the instructors, um, I think one of the, uh, I don't, we haven't really had that discussion of how to in incorporate Wikipedia or, or Wikidata. Um, there, there is uh, interest around how can we get course guides and live guides and whatever um, into uh, uh, the search results, uh, and I don't really know how to do that. But that question of how do we get past that, like, you know, not this source, um, that's going to be an interesting discussion, and I think we should have that. I think we'd also say that we, the instructors don't want people to, or students to cite and say birthday from a library catalog record itself. So hopefully it's not too far. So I want to go back to Andrew's question about the long tail of research and wondering whether anybody's exploring using ORCID, which is where the researchers put their own data, or at least some of the researchers put their own data, and as another source for those uh, researcher information. Um, so one of the things that I'll mention with the, the panel that we had and um, one of the additional tasks that we will be um, exploring in some of our future developments uh, is um, the, the Sparkle query that we are running to drive that panel also gives us all of the identifiers internally. We're not doing anything with them, but we started going out to um, various uh, like things like Scopus and, and Discogs, starting to starting to look at maybe the not traditionally linked data sources about how we can use identifiers that we can get from our authorities 
and start making those connections. Um, we didn't obviously get a whole lot of time or else I would have uh, uh, demoed something for that uh, here. But it is definitely on a, a big task on our future kind of roadmap for starting to look at where we can go start getting other connections through other identifiers. When I was at the University of Notre Dame, one thing we did with the catalog department was, because um, I wasn't in the catalog department there, we sat down and um, looked at protocols for creating authority records for our campus authors. And one of the things was find their ORCID. If they don't have an ORCID, <laughs> ping the person who does ORCID outreach. <laughs> And kind of be like, hey, you have some publications. Like, why don't we get you involved with the ORCID and see if they can get it that way and then back into the authority records. So it was kind of a cycle. And it made the, and that gets the catalogers felt like they were, they were actually contributing something that could be used later. And it also um, assisted with our, with our overall outreach. And they could show, too, like, we're making an authority record or anything. Um, and then just a hypoth an idea that I'm playing around with once we get our catalog done is I would like to see what kind of collaborator info we can generate ourselves that maybe isn't available out there because people don't think about it, but we can machine generate. Um, suppose that author A has written two books with author B and a book with author C, um, and maybe B and C have written one together. Like, how can we express that relationship, which we have in our data, but people don't think, you know, oh, so-and-so who has written three treatises on, you know, plankton. Um, they're not gonna, people, that's not exciting to most people, they're not gonna be updating that record. But like, how could we generate that data? How could we put it out? And how could we reflect that in our own catalogs? It's like, something I just did this to on. So, um, completely different project. This is, my name's Dave Lake. Um, we ingest all of ORCID. We ingest 60-some research profiling sites. Um, it's not authoritative data um, because in most cases, the institutions have failed to retrospectively ingest people's CVs and resolve that to good structured information. So the, the prospect of relatively new information being useful in that regard is fine, but from an ORCID perspective, the only real source is an individual banging on a keyboard or using the Scopus ingest mechanism that's present. So, and that that level of, of build out within a ORCID record is extremely rare. So, I mean, ORCID's fine for identity, but you can't really trust it for anything else. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I, this may not actually be as relevant as I think it might be, so if it is um, not, just you know, ignore me and move on. But one thing that I'm really interested in particularly is data that we just do not have the capacity to create anymore. So there is the, the really interesting area of bringing in data from external sources to enhance discovery and make people con and contextualize the things that users are coming across. But there's also um, the enhancement of data from external sources that we're not going to capture all the time, like table of contents and things of that nature that may very well be in, um, in Wiki data and elsewhere. Um, and I just I'll also wonder how does that, it's, it sort of fits into this concept and the reason I'm mentioning it is because it has the same idea of concerns over legitimacy and, um, and sourcing and identifying this is not our data that we're providing, this is something else. And, um, I think that some of the um, the screenshots that Jesse showed around sort of in, in really bringing that into the record and sort of including those data very closely aligned um, could be a mechanism for sort of for ensuring that we're providing that rich discovery environment without having to um, sort of make things really disparate um, when they are core pieces of data, not the resource itself. Um, again, I'm sort of flattering, so this may not be as relevant as I thought it would be. But um, anyway, that's what I was thinking of during this question of from external sources, what data do we need? It's probably the data that we can't ourselves generate anywhere at scale. I don't want to hijack uh, 
Jason's question. I don't know if you wanted to answer that first before, because I'm going to kind of take a detour with assessment. I'm kind of curious in what things you've done to assess is this working or not? I mean, you've done so, it sounds like you've done some assessment initially just to understand you know, what direction do we want to go, but how do you know that you're doing it successfully, that you're actually meeting the needs of undergraduates, graduates, faculty, etc.? cetera? Um, yeah, so at least from, uh, I think from, from our perspective, one of the really important things for us to be able to start getting that information, uh, more than the information that Ken Kamuda was mentioning that her and Astrid we're working on gathering um, is getting something in front of users. I mean, you know, you, you can test mock-ups as much as you want, but until you actually have something with real data in your actual catalog, and you can do actual user testing with those those various demographics, um, you know, it's it, we're just speculating. So um, that was one of the really important pieces for us to get that into a publicly available demo. Um, although, you know, mostly we'll be dealing with people this, in this in the Stanford community, but we did want available for the LD4 community. Um, as well as for us internally to start gathering that data, which will start happening, I think, as early as next week. Um, we're going to be starting to do uh, user testing. So, uh, yeah, we did the, the mock-up evaluation to try to understand if this design is working or if this is something that we do uh, with my useful. Um, and Astro did that uh, valley. And then next week, they're going to take the search for the prototype that Jesse showed and do that. We're also planning on have, uh, taking some of our ideas at Cornell um, for integrating specifically relationships and so not just knowledge panels, but uh, sort of related works and, and bringing that in around some examples we have that could also tie back to our own digital collections and doing a similar sort of uh, user usability uh, round. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll just keep prototyping and, and evaluating this pretty much cycle right now. So that, that's it. This is my second hot potato. I'll, I'll just say that as a proof of concept that was in production, the, the level of assessment has been almost nil. No individual like consultations with people, but realistically, I think the number of people who are motivated to click on the Wikidata icon to generate the cards is probably very low, and we're very privacy sensitive, so we don't track how many people are clicking. So um, I look to our larger friends to provide more data. So I think it, so the usability is one form of assessment. I was just going off your question earlier, sorry, that didn't get your name, about how many times are things clicking on it. I think another form of interesting assessment might be how much would it cost our cataloging departments to create records that have this depth of coverage. Uh, it might be a more interesting figure and one that we could look at. Uh, hi, uh, Dean Season from University of Victoria. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, are you optimistic that users really want these knowledge panels in the catalog and that contextual information being brought in, or do you think that? That behavior, I guess, that expectation can be met, or they'll, the more they see it, maybe they'll, the more they, they'll expect that type of contextual information in the catalog or these discovery interfaces. Um, I, I know personally, I mean, I just, I, I catalog and, and head up at a unit, and uh, I always just uh, open another tab and then <laughs> do another search. I mean, I guess I, I don't really expect all of this contextual information to really be in this this library discovery environment necessarily, but I'm just curious about whether you're optimistic that users really need this in, in our library environments or not. Um, yeah, I think uh, given the sort of, uh, one of the students said it's the bomb.com when we did the, uh, when Astrid did the uh, author knowledge panels, I think similar to Steve with the results he saw, uh, mostly, it wasn't really negative. Um, it was like, yeah, okay, that's good. And that actually some of it was quite positive, like this actually is quite helpful. Um, speaking to the cataloging experience, I know when we were doing uh, prototyping for cataloging, I mean, even catalogers thought that was useful uh, to actually see the context. A lot of times they seem to be opening up, I mean, you can still open up a new tab from that, but being able to see sort of in one shot or looking at the screen, um, the pieces of information you find relevant, if you see 10 other things you can care about, then 
Um, so I'm hoping that next week's uh, session will go well. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I mean, one, one thing that I guess I, I think about that, and of course I'm not speaking of this from a point of actual knowledge, this is clearly a presumption on my side, um, but when we were first starting to test Blacklight with, uh, with people, um, and mind you this was several years ago now, so you might not get the same answer, uh, a lot of the students actually likened the search compared to the previous catalog experience much more closer to Google. Now, I, you know, we're, we're, we're number three. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not trying to actually compare ourselves, but they were making that comparison. Like, oh, this is kind of like Google. Like, I'm getting relevancy ranked results. Like, maybe they might not use that word, but they, they were conceptually making that connection. And I think now in a discovery environment like Google, there is the expectation for that contextual information. And so I think maybe that's what the connection we're trying to make there or thinking of is that um, there might actually be an expectation in uh, say a blacklight like catalog that might behave a little bit more like Google than um, than other traditional uh, catalog environments or a catalog environment might not be the right word discovery environments. Um, so I'm, I'm based on that. I think maybe there might there might start to be some assumption that we are going to be able to pull to pull in more contextual information for them. But again, that's totally a presumption on my end. Yeah, as always, I think it's important to keep the design questions in mind and actually hear what users have to say. So I am optimistic. Um, at the same time, I don't want to just be like, here's a knowledge panel, and I walk away. Um, I want to see what they have to say, so. OK, well, I think we have just hit noon, which I think is the end of the session. So if you want to continue this discussion, I would encourage you to check out the LB4 Discovery Affinity Group, chaired by whoever has the message, and with that as a regular participant as well. <laughs> Thank you everyone for, for this meeting and discussion. Thank you.